Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here with your weekly nibble from the Rust development feedback. And as you can see from the thumbnail, the first bit of news I have for you pertains to Rust's ongoing ride to become the reing man's Minecraft. Because in the interests of health, safety, and fashion, you won't be the only one hiding their sensitive bits behind old road signs in the future. These are our first glimpses of equine armor, and although sadly it won't be ready in time for the next patch, and the visuals may still change a bit, at some point soon we'll have have the confidence to gallop stylishly into whatever kerfuffle comes our way. No details as to crafting requirements or anything like that yet, and I can't say whether it'll be a skinnable item or not, but you know I'll let you know when that becomes clear. Of course, the drive to make land travel a safer and more pleasurable experience for all is well underway, and as I told you last week, a new vehicles branch is filling up with commits relating to modular cars that presumably will look something like this, and that will enable us to create our own attractive scrapyard challenge monstrosities from modules we'll find lounging around on the island. Thanks mostly to a couple of other face punch projects, Wise Guys and Flotel, having been yeeted into a bin marked cancelled, there are now an extra six developers working on Rust, so we'll hopefully witness an acceleration in progress, and the chap who's in charge of the vehicles, Bill, has worked on modular cars before in other games, so it seems he knows his onions. From the commits, it looks like chassis, fuel tanks and cockpits are all being worked on as well as physics and centers of mass. But this is a whole truck full of work, and it may be some time until we're able to vent our fury off-road, although from previous comments it seems that the terrain we take them over could lead to some pricey trips to the garage if we're not careful. I'll let you know. Over to the world of music quickly, and nothing strikes a chord of fear into the hearts of your enemies, or indeed irritates your friends and neighbours quite as much as a good trumpet. Except maybe a vuvuzela. Please don't add those or I'm uninstalling. And so you'll be inspired to know, I'm sure, that accordion to the commits, one of the first instruments we'll be getting our greasy hands and mouths on is a trumpet, and sounds for a drum and piano are also being added. Now, you'll remember that I mentioned a few other instruments were also being tuned up, namely a trombone, violin, reworked guitar, tuba, and cowbell. However, it's not clear which selection of these we'll finally be declaring audio warfare on our neighbours with yet. This is another feature that we don't have a date on, but stay tuned and I'll keep you up to score. Yes, but, you say, give us optimizations for that is what we crave. Sure, the idea of charging our armoured neddies at a Vanessa Carlton tribute act is appealing, but if we're only getting three frames a year, it makes us want to defenestrate our trumpets. Well, it's not all about new stuff. There are a number of optimizations going on under the hood, some of which I've already mentioned. The latest version of Unity is being tested, along with texture streaming, which hopefully will work this time. This week, there were more water and garbage collection optimizations, a new shadow quality setting, with number two having a 25% lower overhead now, a major rework to wires, which should see electrical systems performing a lot better, a skin bundle update with extra texture compression, and if you type benchmark into console on the staging branch, you'll be treated to a new demo playback of Gary running around a server somewhere dressed as a scarecrow. This is all part of an effort to better identify areas for improvement performance-wise, talking of which, regular viewers will know that the big ongoing project at the moment is to switch Rust over to Unity's high-definition render pipeline, and this week some early screenshots have leaked out from that branch. I must admit it's difficult to pick out any major improvements from these shots, but what it does show is that a lot of progress has been made already, and although it's likely to be a few months until we see it merged, it's going to substantially shift the visuals of Rust for the better and hopefully make a big difference to client-side performance. There were a couple of fixes, including one to stop horses and traps from clipping through bus stops, and ragdolls having their head bones replaced with neck bones instead. Yeah. Plus, it looks like Helk is finally making changes to turrets, which I'm assuming will fulfil his threat to make them require electricity. This is something that missed the boat last month, but it looks like it may well be in the next patch instead, on September the 5th, and could be accompanied by other changes, but we'll see. Now, if you're one of the average 200 odd people who play Rust on Linux, then I need to have a word with you now. And I'll put a link in the pinned comment to Gary's blog post about this, but the TLDR of it is that because of the logistics of supporting Rust on Linux, and after having consulted the community about potential solutions, the decision's been made to pull the plug on the Linux version on September the 5th. However, Facepunch will be offering a full refund to anyone with a Linux copy, and the rules on eligibility are very relaxed. It is recommended to wait a bit before you claim for one, though, because Valve need to do a bit of work on their back end first. As I say, 
read the blog post about this if it applies to you as there's a lot more info there. In other works in progress, no more news yet on that scrap heli beast apart from the jibs having been made, but something that did pop up in a commit yesterday was news of some new electrical components. Firstly, a damage detector or seismic detector which will output more electricity the bigger the vibration it senses, and I presume a separate component which will be a potentiometer, so maybe we'll be able to make dimmer switches, perfect for those more romantic occasions. This is all I know about them at the moment, but I'll keep you up to date here and on Twitter when they're available to fiddle around with. Lastly, one of my spies tells me that a certain blog that the community used to frequent a lot might very well be making a comeback. Mm, more on this soon, no doubt. Let me know in the comments what you think to horse armor. Would you use it? Would you try to wear it yourself? If it was skinnable, what sort of thing would you like to see? And what do you reckon to everything else I've spoken about? I want to know. Follow me over on Twitch, where I stream lots of stuff three times a week. Join me on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group to stay up to date with me. Support me on Patreon, and I'll catch you all soon. But in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio.